fastest human alive, dude. All right, so today we are uh, testing out to see what clothing is the fastest. Now, I'm not going to publish this to some scientific journal, so the science is very bro-ish. But let me explain to you how I'm going to try to control this and how I'm going to try to keep some scientific integrity into this test. All right, so we are testing out eight different outfits from MotoGP being completely outrageous. There's no one that's going to be riding this. But to get some sort of baseline to go, okay, well, this is basically the slowest that you could possibly be with clothing. And we're going to go through a lot of different iterations of, you know, a mountain bike rider, a club rider, a triathlete, just a casual guy, all the way up to a full-on TT $500 skin suit. This is insane, right? Full TT helmet, velo toes, the whole thing. Now, again, if you don't know anything about power meters, that's how we're keeping this super objective. The power meter reads the same always. So 150 watts is 150 watts. 300 watts is 300 watts. It doesn't matter about fatigue because of that power meter. If I do the same watts, it's all the same. Now, this video is brought to you by Competitive Cyclist. They have been such a huge help with so many different things. And this video is kind of an a, 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 accumulation of all the different things that I've done with competitive cyclists. So the shoes I'm wearing, the velo toes, the kit, the helmets, a lot of this I have accrued over time through competitive cyclists. So if you use code VEGANCYCLE15, you'll get 15% off your first purchase, some brands excluded, but if it doesn't work for the brand that you want, give their gearheads a call. They're amazing. All right, enough talking. Let's just jump straight into this. All right, so there's a lot of data to get through, but basically we have four screens here. Three of them run the same course, 1.5 miles. The uh, arrow, very hard, the 400 watt, that was only over a one mile. So you can see here with the MotoGP, you've got uh, four minutes, 57 seconds for the easy, and then 410 for the upright hard, and 404 for the arrow hard. So same course, and then I have the difference between upright and arrow, as that was a 2.4% gain just in the body position um, with this outfit. Now with this one being so flappy, it actually was slower over the easy upright and the hard upright. It was faster over the hard arrow and, the, uh, and kind of the sprint, but again, there's a real interesting trend that starts with this is that the difference between the upright and the arrow position. So same watts, 300 watts, it's just in the my body being in more arrow position. That was a 3.9% increase. I mean, that's 10 seconds over a mile and a half. That's huge for just body position alone. Now this one is more applicable, like someone would actually maybe ride this. Uh, the percentages next to each one of the times, that is the, the percentage of difference between this and the last outfit. So the difference between Amish Bro and Full Sender, you can see uh, down there with the blue, yellow, orange, and red uh, icons. It was, you know, 4% faster on the easy, 1% faster on the hard, 2% faster on the arrow hard. And again, this was 4.8% faster just in the body position alone. Here's my favorite outfit, just the t-shirt and some bibs, just super comfortable. 6.6% faster between being arrow in the arrow position and upright. Uh, and down below you can see this was 3% faster on the easy, 3% faster on the hard and upright, 5% faster in the hard arrow, and 4% faster in the sprint. And so I think that the biggest difference here was probably the pants, like the mountain bike outfit had those baggy cargo pants, these bibs being a little more streamlined, uh, I think that made the big difference. <laughs> So 
So with the triathlete uh, outfit here, now I know I'm wearing socks, so it kind of makes this test invalid, but I was really surprised at seeing how this one wasn't faster. This broke the trend of everything going in a faster direction. This was 2% slower on the easy effort and about half a percent slower on the aero hard effort, which is really surprising because you would think less clothing would make you go faster, and I didn't see that here. This one actually... Uh, also, bet the difference between upright and arrow is only 4.8%, which is a reduction from the last one. All right, so the club rider has a jersey on, but it's a little bit baggy. And then the bibs are a little bit baggy. So these were actually the first pair of bibs I ever got. They were from China, like five bucks. Uh, this one now goes back into the trend of upright versus arrow increasing. The, the, the gap, the difference is increasing, which is really a strange trend. Almost 6%, 1% uh, faster than everything compared to the triathlete with uh, the sprint distance being the exact same time. All right, so your elitist rider, right? Aero helmet, aero kit, not a full skin suit. This is a two-piece kit, but everything's really tight. Uh, I've got some really good shoes on. And again, what's so crazy, and I'll talk about this later, is the difference between upright and aero. The more aero gear I have, the more important it is that I'm actually in the aero position. This one was 5.6% faster than the club rider in an aero hard position and faster across the board on everything else. So now I don't think it's any surprise that this was out and out the fastest uh, outfit, right? I've got a $500 skin suit, I've got uh, velo toes, I've got a proper TT helmet, but again, 8.7% decrease in time just in the body position. And so that trend is so insane to see that the more aero gear I have, the more important that position is. Now, this was uh, less than 1% faster than the Elite Rider. So not a huge difference, but a difference nonetheless. Now we're going to dive into the data a little bit deeper here. So what's super interesting is the difference between the arrow position and the non-arrow position. So same exact watts, but the more arrow gear you have, the more important it is that you're in that arrow position. So now with the exception of the triathlete, which was a real weird kind of anomaly in the trend, you can see that by having more aero gear, it is more important to be in that TT position. 2.4% for the GP as to 87 as the TT. So now let's compare and see is keeping it casual, if he's in an aero position, can he go faster than an upright TT? So casual versus full TT. Now the casual is in the aero position, the full TT is not. Over a 300 watt effort, same power, the casual is actually 2.2% faster. So a bro in a t-shirt can be two minutes faster over a two hour ride than the guy just flexing on everyone, wearing all the aero stuff, but not in an aero position. So you can make up for the gear by getting into that aero position. Now, just on an easy effort, the casual t-shirt is gonna be 2.5% slower. That's three minutes over a two hour ride, given that both riders are upright. But again, if you're, only, if you're doing an easy ride, then it doesn't really matter. That, those percentages don't really matter because the watt difference isn't gonna be that big. All right, so if you're a club rider and you don't have any of the aero gear, if you're doing the exact same effort as the TT guy and you're in the exact same position, just everything is equal, the clothing alone over a 20 minute hard effort is gonna be about two and a half minutes slower for the, the club rider. That is a tremendous amount of time just in the clothing alone, given that everything else is the same, power and position. But let's say you're a club rider and you are able to get into that arrow position and you're doing the same amount of effort that a guy with all the gear is doing, but he's upright. Over a 20 minute hard effort, a club rider will go 30 seconds faster given he's in the arrow position and the TT guy is not. 
So really showing here the law of diminishing gains. If you go from a club kit to an elite kit, you could save 5.6%. That is massive, given that you're in an arrow position and you're doing the same power. Now, the step from the elite kit to the TT kit is a lot of money, and you're only going to save maybe 1%, less than 1%. Uh, so it's, you know, not a big of a jump to go from elite to a TT, but definitely from a club to an, but the gains really come in when you have the body in the arrow position. So in not an arrow position, same effort, the difference between the full on TT outfit and the elite outfit is less than half a percent, which still over enough time is significant. And then from the club rider to the elite rider is only 1.7% as opposed to the 5% in the arrow position. So that arrow position is, it, it plays the biggest role in any of this. So definitely some of the big takeaways here are one is that if you have no arrow kit whatsoever, you don't have the money to pop the, on the, all the arrow fancy stuff. Learning how to get your body in an arrow position could save you so much. It could get you those kind of gains, right? Just by getting your body in that arrow position, you could have the gains of a $1,000 TT suit. The other big takeaway is that if you have that TT gear, that being in the arrow position is very important. And actually, the more streamlined your kit is, the bigger the difference between upright and in the arrow position given the same amount of power. I thought that that was also an extremely interesting takeaway uh, just to see how important it is to be in the position when you have that TT gear. Let me get you the three bike helmet. But anyway, I really hope that you enjoyed the video. Again, if you use code VEGANCYCLE15, you'll get 15% off your first purchase at competitivecyclist.com. Some brands excluded, like I said, just call their gearheads though if you need. Anyway guys, as always, vegan cyclist. Yeah. Yeah.